Welcome. Today I'd like to address a question, a basic question that a lot of people have trouble with, explaining that if I have an inequality, say a is less than b, and I want to multiply through by a negative number, like negative 1 maybe, so I have negative a and negative b, apparently the rule is that you're meant to flip that inequality sign. So why on earth does multiplying by a negative quantity force you to flip the inequality sign? That's the question of the today. All right. So what I'm going to do to really answer this question is, is try to set up some, some principles But what do I believe about inequalities. So what I'm going to do is set up a model here. Uh, suppose I did like a, a, a balance with, with bags of apples. Here's bag A and bag B. I tell you A is less than B. That is B has more apples in it than bag A does. So if I actually put these things on a balance, so here's a balance and here's a bag of apples on one side of a balance, well it's telling me that A has less apples in it, therefore A is lighter than B, so the balance would balance would be tilted this way. All right, what do we like to believe about this model? Well, if I add an apple to both sides, then I believe nothing's going to change. The scales will still be tipped in this manner. So I've had A is less than B, adding one, adding one, I still believe it's the inequality sign behaves as follows. If I add another two apples to both sides, I still believe it's balanced, tipped in this way. So I guess I'd like to believe that a plus x will always be less than b plus x. If a is less than b, then adding x to both sides preserves the inequality. And let me be honest, at least for positive numbers x. Now, what if I wanted to add negative numbers to both sides? Do I still believe it? Now, what do I mean by adding negative numbers? So I'm going to add negative apples, anti-apples to both sides. So here's an anti-apple on the left, and here's an anti-apple on the right. It's like adding negative 1 to both sides. Well, what happens to an apple and anti-apple? I guess they annihilate each other. So it really is adding negative 1 is like, this really means take away an apple. So if I take away an apple on both sides, yes, I'd like to believe it would still be tipped this way. Well, if I add anti 2 apples to both sides, that is take away 2 here and take away 2 here, so add negative 2 to both sides, do I still believe that the, this tipping is balanced this way? Absolutely. But if I take away an apple from A, so I have to make a draw, and take away an apple from B, so if I go way in there, um, I still believe that A minus 1 is going to be lighter than B minus 1. So I guess I believe this rule works for all x's. If x is a positive number, I believe it. If x is a negative number, I guess I'm going to believe it. All right, what else do we believe about, uh, about this picture of, of uh, two bags of apples? Um, my picture's going to get messy now, but suppose I double the number of bags on the left and double the number of bags on the right. So I have two bag A's on the left and two bag B's on the right. Well, if A was lighter to B than begin with, then certainly two A's is still lighter than two B's. So 2a, I still believe, is going to be less than 2b. So I believe nothing's changed about the inequality sign for multiplying by 2. But if I triple the number of bags on the left and right, I believe it's still going to preserve the inequality sign. Or if I multiply by a fraction, if I suppose I did only half a bag of a, there's half a bag of a, and half a bag of b, there's half a bag of b, I still believe that's going to be lighter than that. So even half of a is less than half of b. So it looks like I'm also uh, convincing myself that multiplying through by a positive number still preserves the inequality sign. And I'm being honest here, a positive number, positive x's. I guess it's the negative x's that are scaring us. All right, but that's enough. If I believe these two rules, then I am forced to conclude that if I multiply through by a negative quantity, then I'm going to have to flip that inequality sign. It's a rule that I've been told to memorize, but now I'm going to see why it's actually true. Here goes. So notice how I'm very, very careful in my language here that if you choose to believe these two rules, then you're forced to believe, uh, you're forced to operate in the following way about negative, multiply through by negative numbers. Now, I think you actually have to believe these rules. It seems to work for apples, at least. Anyhow, that's how mathematicians phrase things. Here goes. If I believe rule number one, let's go, see what happens. A, whoops, I need a pen. A is less than B. By rule number one, no matter what I add to both sides, if it's positive or negative, it still has to preserve the inequality sign. So it'd be sneaky. I'm going to add an anti-bag of A to both sides. Well, if I believe that rule, that means 0 is less than B minus A. And now, if I um, add an anti-bag of B to both sides, which according to this rule, I believe is still can preserve the inequality sign, I'll see some nice things happen. Negative B will be less than negative A. Now, that's it. That's pretty easy. That's, that's all I did. Add, subtract A from both sides, subtract B from both sides. So I believe that's true. Start with that, and I end up with this. The reason why we have to flip the inequality sign is that we're insisting that we still read a to b from left to right. 
a less than b. Now I've got b to the left and a to the right. If I want to rewrite this so that a is on the left and b is to the right, I just have to flip this equation over, which is not mathematical, it's just me choosing to write a on the left and b on the right. Which in effect, what have I done is flip the inequality sign. So the only reason we flip the inequality sign by multiplying by negative numbers is really because we prefer to keep the quantities in the order they first read in. We read them in. That's basically it. The arguments are very swift. All it is just algebra is take away a from both sides, take away b from both sides, you've got it. End of story. That's why we have to flip the inequality sign, because we then want to read still things from left to right. All right, um, that's multiplying by negative 1. What if I multiply through by negative 2? Well, that's, usually, that's not tricky. Um, first of all, what I might do to multiply by negative 2 is first of all multiply by 2. So let me write this out. So do I need a pen? Suppose a is less than b. If we like to believe this rule is true for all positive numbers, then 2a will be less than 2b. And to get this then to be for negative 2 instead of multiply by 2, multiply by negative 2, let's multiply through by negative 1 now. I get negative 2a is greater than negative 2b because I just proved moments ago multiply by negative 1 in a sense flips the inequality sign. So multiply by negative 2 has had the same effect. If I multiply by any negative number is the same as first of all multiply by x, doesn't do anything to inequality, and then multiply by negative 1 in a sense flips the inequality sign. So that's it. Multiply by any negative quantity, if we believe, want to play this game, has to flip the inequality sign. Now, I've got like a, a, a weird physics question here. Like my brain likes to have fun. Uh, we talked about apples and anti-apples and so forth moments ago. So if I had a, what was my picture? It was a scale. Oops, I need a pen. It was a bag B with more apples than a bag A. And we looked at the anti-version of A and anti-version of B. All right, so anti-apples. So if I had an anti-bag, if, if I had a, an anti-B bag worth of apples, what am I trying to say? If I looked at anti-B, that's a bag of B anti-apples. Now, a lot of apples weigh down. That's actual apples. I guess anti-apples must do the exact opposite of being weighed down by gravity. I bet they weigh up by gravity. So if bag B has more apples in it, then bag anti-B has more anti-apples in it. So, you know, A is being weighed down less. That means anti-A is being pulled up less, anti-B is being pulled up a lot. So if I draw the, sc draw the scale picture for anti-apples, am I making any sense? I feel like I'm rambling right now. Where's my pen gone? I keep losing my pen. A bag of anti-B is going to be pulled up more than a bag of anti-A. That's basically what I'm going to say. Which I guess is a picture of this guy. So here's my real physics question. Do physicists believe that antimatter actually has, is anti in every possible sense, that the mass of antiparticles are still being weighed down by gravity? Or do the mass of antiparticles get weighed up by gravity in some sense? So I guess my research question here is, what do physicists believe about antimatter? If I really had an anti-apple, is the mass of that thing being pulled up? Or do they believe the mass is still being pulled down? just had a discussion with the physicist about this last night over dinner. So there's actually something to, to be talked about here. Anyhow, that's a silly rambling question. Uh, in the end, to flip to, to multiply by negative number, just subtract A from both sides, subtract B from both sides, and you'll be forced to conclude that you flip the inequality sign. That's it in three seconds. All right, a rambly video. Sorry about that. Thanks very much.